So welcome everyone. Sorry about the small delay. Um, we have had some tethering technical issues. So the presentation that you're seeing is being delivered from Austria, from Vienna, and, but the, the actual slides are being delivered from the UK. So we have a very fast pigeons going across the Europe, pressing <laughs> buttons and doing things. <laughs> so, well, thank you for joining us. Um, we are delighted to have Vaska Zaykova from uh, Raiffeisen Bank joining us. Um, Raiffeisen has been doing uh, uh, an agile transformation, a, a transformation in the bank for a couple of years now. And Vaska is involved in the talent development part of the bank. So um, without any further ado, we, we just say welcome Vaska. Thank you very much for doing this. We have a, a bit of a technical challenge here, but it should be all fine. Um, bear with us if we, if we struggle with the technology a little bit, but um, um, it will be all great. Um, over to you, Vasca. Thank you very much, Jose, and thank you very much also to your team for giving me the opportunity to be here today and to share all the experience that we made in the Academy. And also very warm welcome to everybody who joined. Again, apologies for the delays, but you know, when it comes to technology, sometimes there are things that we can't really predict. So thank you for your patience. Uh, we will catch up on the time, so there will be nothing to, to lose um, in, in time perspective. And again, um, welcome from Vienna. As Jose mentioned, this is like a co-country delivery, <laughs> having the slides in the UK, but delivering the audio and the speech from Vienna. Now, you have read probably the description in the, in the meetup, so you now know, and also Jose uh, made this nice intro, that I'm going to talk about talent, talent development in an international banking group. So here we are talking about Raiffeisen Bank International. And uh, my talk is built basically around our learning. So what did we learn? What did we do so far when it comes to talent development? What, and most importantly, is what can we improve? What were our findings until now? And what do we believe that we could do better? Coming back to the keywords. So here we are talking about talent, right? Talent development. And how do we do talent development? And what do we need to pay attention to? Well, one thing here is the recruiting. So we are having, um, we can make sure that we bring the best talents in our organization by going to the market and by recruiting them, by bringing the skills needed within the organization. And we are constantly looking for the best masterminds in our organization. But then there is a second um, aspect of talent, and this is the talent development. So what do we do with all the talent that we already have in our organization? And the answer here is that we are growing those talents. So we are investing in, in the people. We are trying to develop the skills that they need in order to achieve the company values. So again, addressing the question of why is talent development so important for us? So we have identified three main reasons for talent development. The first one is, of course, the fast changing environment that we are living in. So, I mean, look at the, the last four months that we were having. Uh, this is the best example of how fast things can change and how uncertain the environment is. And in order to prepare our employees and our workforce for this uncertain environment, we need to constantly identify and deliver new skills for them so that they are prepared to deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges that they are facing. The second one is the productivity, of course. Uh, why? Well, when we invest in the people, we show the, the, those employees that they're valuable for us, that they bring, um, that they're contributing directly to the, to the company values, that whatever they do is directly linked to the business value that we are delivering to our customers. And of course, this makes them feel motivated and to be more productive. And the third reason, this is, related to work morale. Again, coming from developing their skills, from investing in our people, we make sure that work morale is increased. And this, of course, means that they stay longer with us and we have a lower, lower turnover. Now, um, having clarified the why, we need to move to the how. So I would really like to go with you through, through, the, through the whole process of um, our development, 
But before this, um, I would really like to tell you first who we are. So when I say we, I mean, well, Raiffeisen Bank International, and I will refer to it shortly as RBI. So who are we? We are an Austrian-based um, bank, but we are represented in 13 other countries in Central and Eastern Europe. We also have additional subsidiaries, which are not only the banks, but um, for example, a card processing center, which is also part of our network. In Austria, we are a leading corporate and investment bank, and we have retail segment and private segment in the network units. And in total, we have 47,000 employees and a customer base of 16.8 million customer all over, uh, from all over the group. And um, yes, again, as Jose mentioned in the beginning, we are going through an adaptive transformation. So we're going through an adaptive transformation. And uh, here I, I really borrowed a nice metaphor that we very often use within the organization. And this is related, I mean, think about the, the, the size of the organization, right? So I'm not really talking about one bank, but I'm talking about the full group, all these banks. So think of it as a transformation of this big, slow, heavy sheep into these self-organized speedboats. So this is the metaphor that we use for the transformation in RBI. And this actually reflects the reality that we're having. But, you know, adaptive is not the purpose. Adaptive is uh, the tool to help us to deliver our business goals, to help us deliver better customer experience, more customer value, to have innovative products, to be competitive on the market. I mean, probably you understand that currently in the financial market, we have great competition coming from all over the fintechs and, and the tech giants, giants as well currently. So we really want to focus as well on our workforce, on our employees to increase their engagement and to, to bring this culture of entrepreneurship in the, in the company so that the teams feel so empowered that they own their delivery, that they own their budget and, um, and the products that they're working on. And I mean, this is probably a good place where I need to make um, a disclaimer. I am not an agile coach in Raiffeisen Bank International. So I can't give you all those details around the information, but what I can do if you're interested and if you would like to further exchange on this topic, I can offer you to connect you to one of our agile coaches. So please address me after, um, after the presentation, just send me a quick message and I will make sure to establish the connection between, between you and uh, one of our coaches. Okay, so now you know who I'm, I am not, but who am I actually? You probably know my name. I just have to say it out loud once again, just to make sure that you're pronouncing it correctly. It's Vaska Zaikova. And I come originally from Bulgaria. So I was born and raised in Bulgaria. I moved to Vienna a few years ago and uh, I studied here. So I graduated from university and in October, 2017, I decided to join Raiffeisen Bank. Um, I am part in uh, part of Group IT Transformation and Workforce Management. This is the team located on the org structure in the IT in Vienna. And um, yes, we in IT are driving this initiative of talent development, of course, with the support of our HR colleagues. And currently, as you can see on the last bullet point, I am driving the Go IT Academy. So the initiative that I am presenting here today. Great, so I think now maybe a few words to the Academy so that you can, you can have the full background and the whole picture. The name says, says it itself, it's an educational initiative. So we are really working on uh, developing essential skills within the organization and those skills are directly linked to our strategy. So our primary function is education, talent development. So really it's about bringing the knowledge to the people. And we see ourselves as a strategic investment. And I will tell you why. It's because around 40 to 50% of the costs which arise through the structuring of, of the program, all the external costs that we're having, we cover centrally from head office from Vienna about half of those costs. So that's why we say that it's an investment from our side as well. And um, 
I think very, very important here to mention is our secondary function. So primary function is to deliver knowledge, to deliver education, develop talent, but secondary function is a very significant one. And the secondary function is related to the community. So the idea behind the whole academy and bringing all those people from all over the group, involving 19 RBI units, so bank and other delivery units and um, subsidiaries, the idea behind is that those people can exchange. So they meet physically, they exchange, they learn together, they share. And this is of course one of the most important things when we talk about uh, community building. Okay, so on my next slide, I, I plan to show you the out, before this, yes, I plan to show you the outlook or what we, what we plan to do in 2020. But before that, I would really appreciate if you take part in a mini survey that I have prepared. So now if you are using your mobile devices, you can just go to menti.com and enter the code that you can see here. So I have prepared for you two questions just to make it more interactive. The first question is, I would be very interested, which of the following methods do you use within your organization to develop your skills? So are you rather focused on self-service? So what I mean here is your employees, they go alone and they find the trainings or you provide them with, with readings, with recordings and so on. Are you talking about directed learning? So we have here classroom, uh, classroom training. Uh, we have here some directed online trainings as well. Um, are you talking about mentoring, coaching, um, or maybe job rotation? So you can choose one of those or you can choose more of those if you have. Perfect. So six people, eight, maybe if I could have a 10, 10 replies, that would be very, very nice. It's a wish, wishful thinking. So please. We are more than 20 in the session. So come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I have nine. One more. Come on, please. Don't let me down. One more. Okay. We don't force it. The nine is, it's, it's still fine. And the second question. So Rudy, if I can ask you to go to the second slide. This is, this is something that I would really like to hear from you. Of course, if you have this information. As a comparison, before I show you our focus and the skills that we have identified as critical. So have you in your organizations defined, defined any skills to be critical, to be important, um, to say we need to focus on those particular capabilities in order to achieve, in order to achieve our, our goals? Okay, slide is not active. I'm not sure what does this mean. So anyone who dares to enter something first? Collaboration and listening, I very much agree to that. Leadership, yes, as well. I think you can enter more, two, three options, if I'm not mistaken. Anything related to IT skills, any particular Technical skills that you're targeting. Coaching, yes, very, very important. Facilitation, yes, I agree as well. And business and technology, very good inputs, very good. Automation, yes, perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for this mini survey. So now I know that you are on board, you're here. So there it is. This is the outlook that we have created for 2020 and we created this one i think it was somewhere around the second half of 2019 and you can see here in total we have identified 10 critical programs so we wanted to run in this year 10 most important programs focused around um, on the top for example you can see all the agile methodologies that we have put together so those programs are built around adaptive and here on the on the right hand side and going then lower you see all these IT trainings or technical trainings that we believe are important and of course data which is um, I think I saw it somewhere on the Mentimeter survey yes data is very important for us as well so this is where we are uh, putting our efforts this year and for all these people that 
that go through these programs, what we do is once per year, you can see here on the right side of the slide, we bring them together physically to Vienna. So we invite them for a conference, again, to foster the collaboration and to build a community around, around the people. And this is something we offer them for free. So it's really free of charge. It serves the purpose of community building and inspiration. So now when I, when I say program, just to make sure that uh, we speak the same language, here we are talking about um, nine to 15 training days. So think of it as a learning path. So this is really, um, an ongoing journey that people are, are um, going through. And we cluster the training content usually in modules. So those modules are something of three days, consisting of expert knowledge, consisting of soft skills. For example, for a Scrum Master program, you can have module A starting with three days of basics of Agile and Scrum having some Scrum simulations or Kanban simulations within this content. Then you go to the next module after one to three months and then you build on this, adding some soft skills and so on. And this continues for 15 day in, in, day, days in total. Very important here is that we are also adding some additional activities like group work, um, homework, peer-to-peer -peer visits. We offer the people possibility also to, to have a certification. So this is the time when I really uh, want to show you how we do this. And I don't want to oversimplify, but I try to, to cluster this in two main phases. So the first phase is about designing the programs. Here is re really where we look into the strategy and the goals that we have set. We identify the skills needed and we sit together with internal and ex external ex experts to create the outline. So create the um, uh, percentage of uh, theory, percentage of practice, additional activities. And once we have defined these, we go and announce it. Announcement mean for, means for us that we are presenting this to our senior management. Why are we doing this? Well, as a strategic investment, we need also to have their backup, their understanding, and we need to constantly remind them why is this important and why should you send people to this program? It's again an investment from their side and uh, we, we want to have them as well on board with this so that they go back to their units and send the right people for the right program. And of course, the last part is where we start and, and we run the program. Once we start, uh, we are entering this phase that I, I think it's a never ending phase. Um, it's about adaptation. So it's collecting the feedback, acting on the feedback, um, re redoing the programs if needed. We are constantly changing on the go, making sure that we deliver the right content for the people. And I'm not saying that it's always 100% perfect. I mean, we can never meet 100% perfection, but um, at least listening to the people, we can, we can get closer and closer with every, every round. Okay, um, well, I think this is quite a lot of theory until you now. So what I want to do is to present you one concrete example so that you, you, can, you can try to understand all these things that I, I said until you now, how we implement them in the practice. I brought you a program which is called um, Lead and Coach Adaptive Transformation and we shortly call it Lead and Coach. This is a program we created in the beginning of the transformation. Um, and this was around, I think it was 2018, uh, shortly after we have started with all the transformation initiatives. And I remember we were sitting with, um, with our transformation lead at that time and uh, one of her agile coaches and then we were discussing what is the first target audience we need to, um, to reach. And we said, you can see here in the target group definition, those must be the people who are responsible to drive the transformation in the unit. So first we need to address the ambassadors. We need to have in each and every unit, at least one of those people who can meet the others, take the message and transfer it further to the organization. And uh, in order to do this, we have defined set of expertise knowledge. You can see here in yellow, the yellow parts um, in the outline are the ones which are really strictly connected to agile methodologies and, and expert knowledge there. But we also strong, strongly believe that 
soft skills are very important in order to take the expert knowledge you have and to translate it into your day-to-day -day work. So that's why we have at about, I think, 30% of the program is dedicated to soft skills. And here you can see um, the coaching part. I think I saw it as well in the Menti survey. Yes, coaching is something that we definitely need. And that's why we also included it um, in, in this program. Um, we had a lot of interest for this one. I mean, you can imagine people are in the beginning of the transformation. All they want to have is knowledge. All they are craving is getting information on what is coming, how to do it, what is the right way, is there a right way, and so on. So we received, I think, the double or the triple um, on nominations and interest um, than we put here as a maximum number of participants. Still, we had to limit it because um, it had to be a size big enough so that they have a group because we, we also needed this team building effect, community building effect, but it had to be small enough at the same time so that uh, the trainer can work with all of them on individual level so that uh, you can also, and, and also me as a reference person, that I, I know each and every one, what are, they, what are their needs, uh, what are their strengths, weaknesses, how can I support them? So this is why we limited here the number of participants. And um, something important as well, we already run four groups of this program. So I think we're talking roughly about 60 people, plus minus. And uh, yeah, having 60 ambassadors, um, we slowly started to notice that um, it's time to change. So it's really, um, the program was great, served its purpose. We achieved a lot of great people and I'm, uh, I hope that I have some of, some of them in the audience. So we really, we have amazing people participating in these programs and I'm very happy that uh, we had the chance to meet them. But now it's really time to change it. And what was the ultimate kick for us to change is of course on the next slide. And uh, I, I'm sure that you can relate to this one. I'm, I'm kind of thankful for, for whatever. I, I mean, if not really thankful, but I, if I have to take out the positive sides of, of the crisis that we had, it's definitely the kick for us to change. So now it doesn't mean that we want to cut everything we were doing, not at all. This is very important. And in the moment that we can, um, we can have the on-site delivery and um, again, making people meet and greet, I mean, we go for it. This is really, really crucial for us. But you can imagine how heavy we were impacted. I mean, think about all those people coming from Central and Eastern Europe uh, to Vienna to meet. Think about the traveling uh, and all the restrictions in the different countries. Uh, the, we were not allowed to even gather in Vienna and uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you know this all, all stuff, so I don't need to repeat it, but we were heavily impacted. So um, we tried to stay positive. And I think we stayed making the best out of it. So we have um, actually came to some, I mean, I, I, I call them iteration in reaction <laughs> because there were a few steps. Thanks so much. There were a few steps um, and few phases that we went through when the outbreak was announced. So first was, of course, panic and uh, do things fast. March 2020, imagine we can't travel anymore. So all the programs that were supposed to start in March, we had, we had to cancel. But canceling all these things, I mean, we're talking about um, around more than 100 people who were supposed to start there. So we said, no, we are not canceling, we're postponing. Moved everything to autumn, let's make it um, as certain as possible. But certain level of uncertainty was still there. So we had to deal with this uncertainty but not to be dependent on it. We, we decided in April, okay, still we cannot influence the pandemic and we cannot influence the crisis or the measurements, but we can influence the way that we reacted. So let's have a look again at all the programs we have and think about some of them that we could deliver online. So something that we can offer to the people and we don't want to make the people wait. So agility and being flexible is about being fast and reacting reacting to the constantly changing environment. So in April, we decided to have four programs online remote. It was the first time ever that we did a completely remote program delivery in June. And now on 1st of July, 
looking at what we did in June, I can say we did well. We actually did quite well. And this is why we want to have now this online format, those enriched formats also in the long run. So we want to enrich the talent development of the academy by offering further, more flexible formats. I talk, I'm talking about learning guides. I'm talking about learning groups. I'm talking about online contents where they, people can self-service, can use the self-service and self-decide how much, when, and um, how long. And of course, we have recognized the need to, to scale. So yes, having your ambassadors when you, when you start a new topic, when you introduce a new initiative is great. You should do it. But after a certain period of time, we recognize the need that we need to go broader. So we need to, to jump. We need to make the step and reach the broader audience. And this means that um, we need to get cheaper. So we need to, to be more flexible and to get cheaper because um, it has to be done in a sustainable way. So it, it, it has to be done in a way that you can go as broad as possible. So the scaling was, uh, was something that uh, we are now focusing on. And the third one is um, customer focus. So it's really about talking to the network units because they are so diverse in their not only in the in the in the stage of the transformation. I mean, we have very very diverse level of transformation within the group, but also when it comes to technology usage, uh, when it comes to focus and so on. So we would really like to talk more to the network units and to focus even more on what what they need, so that our learnings fit to their local needs. And I mean, um, now, if you ask me to sum it up, everything that I was, uh, I was sharing with you now, it's for me, I think it was quite a challenge to come up with five, only five key takeaways for you so that you can look at this slide and say, well, I think it makes sense. So I can take some of those um, advices and try to implement or, or recommend in my, in my organization. And this will make me very happy, of course, but I'm not saying that those are the universal um, keys to success. Those are really my learnings from the experience in the academy. And I would really love to share those with you. So number one is experts. So experts, experts, experts involve as many as experts as programs you have. I am I'm doing this, so for all the programs that I showed you, I have at least one counterparty who is my, um, my, my I don't know, my partner, if I can, I can use this word, when it comes to content creation. So he's the one to know the contents, to know the people working in this area. And this is the key. Uh, this is very valuable information that, um, um, I, I, I would like to, to bring closer to you. Then the second one is the quality. I mean, think of it as a, thinking of it as a strategic investment, right? Um, first of all, you need to convince the management that this, what you offer is worth investment, that the people really need this. And this you can do by offering relevant content and by offering interesting content, by offering something with high quality. And on the other hand side, you want the people to come, to stay, to be engaged and proactive in your programs, but you also want them to go back and say in their units, hey guys, I participated in great programs, so I really recommend you to go there. And this is what you, you can achieve with providing high quality. Number three, is focus. Of course, focus is a key. And why? Well, you need to keep the goal in your mind. And the goal is to support business, business initiatives and business results. And this you can do by linking those goals to the skills. So the skills support you in achieving all the initiatives that you have planned. And my recommendation here as well is to have a mix of expert and soft skills very important. Number four, collaboration. Well, collaboration is, a, is something that we are very focused on. And uh, I think you would agree with me when I say that uh, all the activities around the trainings and talent development should aim at collaboration. 
this is very valuable when it comes to, um, uh, to business results. And number five, the last one, but not because it's not important. This is something that we, we learned kind of on the, on the hard way. Uh, why? Well, this is the, the part where I, I, I always try to make it clear. Learning should be part of the job and it should not be on top of the job. So I don't want to have somebody coming to the, to the academy, um, uh, participating three days in a training, but then, then having have to work 80 hours per week only because they participated here. And this is a message that we, we keep delivering to the management, make education part of the job and not a burden. Well, um, I think I'm at the end of my talk. Um, thank you very much for, for your time. Thank you very much for joining. I would be now very curious to hear any questions that you have or any impressions, comments, anything that you want to share with me. Thank you. Um, so I guess yeah. one question I, I had for you yes. on, the, on the development plans and so on, and I guess what, what level did you kind of pitch those to? And I mean level within the bank, because I guess one of the challenges, I, I also work for a bank, is mm -hmm. that the senior leadership who you need to be part of this transformation, and I guess, I guess people in the squad versus people, kind of senior, senior managers, have different, I guess, levels of patience, levels of expertise, levels of, you know, yeah. you know, so it, it, it's quite hard to pitch something at, let's say, a, a technical developer versus a senior leader. It's, it's, you know, it's quite hard, right? It's, it's very difficult, yes. Um, so if your question is how do we, is your question how do we define the target group per program or is your question related to the program that I showed you that, about well, the ambassadors? Yeah, well, I guess what, 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 I guess who were, were the ambassadors? Were they a kind of a, a mixture of levels, or were they all from one particular part of the organization, or okay. one like, yeah? So this very much depends on the program. So now in the lead and coach program, we had a very diverse audience, I must say, because we kept it broad, and this was the idea. We didn't want to limit it to B minus one, B minus two, or B minus three. You know the hierarchical uh, mm -hmm. structure in the bank. Mm -hmm. We wanted there to really have the only requirement. This is a person who should be driving the transformation. This could be somebody from the team. This could be a B minus one manager. We had, we had a good mix. We had developers with um, B minus ones or heads of IT sitting together mm -hmm. in one group. And this was amazing. This was mm -hmm. really amazing experience. This is how we did it. Okay, cool. That, does this answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, actually, sorry, can I just kind of have a follow-up question on that? Yes. Um, so, so I guess, did you have challenges in getting those senior, like you know, head of IT type people to actually sit down and join the, those sessions or, or was there some, some pushback? I mean, the interest in the first and the second wave was very high. So it was, mm -hmm. it come voluntary. We didn't press anybody. It came really out of the, out of the unit. And mm -hmm. uh, I was very happy when I saw this nomination coming from, from one of our countries. There was no, not really a big push. There mm -hmm. was just recommended and please have a look at the content and see if they fit. And then it came, it just came naturally, which, uh, which is, I think is even better. Yeah, than, exactly. Uh, yes. than we cool. expected. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think we have a question as well from the Jason. Jason Tanner, please. Hi, Vasca, and thanks for a great presentation. That was really uh, helpful. Uh, we've built an on-demand online program. So mm -hmm. we have a, a couple of different programs that, that lead to a certification. And what we've seen is that some students who come from uh, the public sources, we serve uh, public clients, people who find us and register, and uh, they're very motivated. We have tried the same programs with corporate clients, your customers, and they typically register as a group. We mm -hmm. see a completely different level of motivation. What have you observed in the behaviors of cohorts of students to get to a goal when it's challenging in the corporate environment uh, and, and what management support is needed for those students to be successful? 
that's a very good question. Uh, thank you for that. So what we did is um, we are the only initiative. So we made ourselves exclusive. We are the only initiative that offers the people the chance to to, to collaborate with the people with other people on the network on the group level sorry so they're coming from different network units um, this was the first thing so making ourselves distinguished by you know you are coming from the different countries but not only I don't know Bulgarians working with Bulgarians it's really a good mixture of countries first of all the second thing was make it scarce so tell them we have 10 places or we have 15 places and usually people again this is contributing to the exclusivity and and the factor that we're having so this is always like people come came to us saying i want to participate i see this as a great value added and i want to be part of it the other thing that we have experienced as a very good uh, way to attract people is the word of mouth so this is what i was mentioning like it doesn't have to be the same program. It can be just another program. Most importantly, this person, um, I, I'm taking Bulgaria again because it's my home country, but you know, this colleague from Bulgaria would come participate in the ambassadors program. And then he will go back and say, hey, this talent development initiatives offers great quality. So you should go there. And then each program from there on that we were offering was taken immediately as a high quality and with high interest. So I think those are the those are the main things that we we were successful um, based on which we were successful. I hope that answers the question. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. Jason, do you have more follow up questions? Uh, I, um, just one more follow up. As you're mm -hmm. going through your adaptation and looking to scale, mm -hmm. how are you thinking about ratios of uh, facilitators and mentors for the learners? Is it one to eight, one to 10, one to 15? I mean, to be very honest, we haven't, I haven't thought of that yet, but I would rather have it bigger, you know, one to 15, maybe one to 20, because we really would like to scale. And I think when it comes to agility and to the agile methodology, the organization is quite ready for this, um, this way of, this uh, way of scaling. Thank you. Vaska, will you be yeah. will you be probably have a a mixed approach? I guess you you will retain for some people the um, the sort of like a small classroom yes, intensive, yes. and then what, what I think if I read what you were saying is you are starting to bring in more self learning, self -learning. Other self 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 pacing and things like that. Yes. so that you can go and scale, you can go wider across the organization. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, th thanks for stressing this out. I don't know if I mentioned it. I planned to mention it, that we are not going to, to cancel those trainings. We will keep them. It's still very motivating and it's very, very important, but we want to do something on top, something more. This is the idea. Thanks, Jose. And I, if I can ask another question, I mean, that, yes. there was interesting, one of the clients that we had a few years ago, and I don't know whether it, how, how it translates to yours, but initial, the initial program, um, I think you were talking about that people will nominate their ambassadors. Yes. At some point, there is an emergence of this, what you were talking about, colleagues recommending to others, and you have people that have the spark. Yeah. How do you capture those? How do you, do, how do you what, what mechanisms do you have in place to find them? those people that are sparking themselves, like, oh, I'm really interested in this, that may have not been nominated by, the, by their organization. How, how do you spot them and support them, those people? This is a very good question, Jose, and I have to tell you, we don't have a mechanism for this. We have not defined one. I mean, we are really relying on, on the feedback coming from the unit, where the people are visible and where the people are proactive. But it's a very good point, and I mean, it's it's a it's a room for improvement to think of a mechanism of this way, so that we can address more people that are probably more um, appropriate for this program. And the, the answer, yes, we currently rely really on on the on the units and with information that they are providing us. Mm -hmm. Which is which is typically the the first step as well. Yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and this okay. is also the, the the thing where we are. Uh, why we want to go more more local because we are now a bit further from the unit so i think when we address the unit specifically and on on local individual level we will be able to capture those um, easily was there any other questions please 
or comments or people sharing their own experience, similar yes. experiences? I mean, if you have any similar experiences, I'm, I'm happy to hear. I mean, it's, it's very valuable for me. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're, uh, I guess um, if you, the experience I had was with a client, uh, actually an interesting, it was a similar sized bank uh, based in the U.S. and serving only the U.S. Uh, retail banking, credit cards, uh, some corporate banking. Um, and the interesting thing is that, I mean, our focus was, was purely on agile. Uh, training mm -hmm. development. So we weren't doing holistic uh, IT type training where we were looking at uh, developers um, and uh, their skill sets. But I, I would be curious about how you approach new curriculum design because there's one aspect of easy to grab off the shelf external training where there's a known curriculum. Uh, but what type of approach you use for curriculum development? Uh, I learned Bloom's Taxonomy. So when we started thinking about a new course, we would think about learning outcomes, like what do we actually want this target audience to know and be able to do after the mm -hmm. course? And then we built really the learning objectives as a result of the outcomes, which then led to the curriculum development. Like what level do we want people to be at? You know, comprehension, application, synthesis, evaluation. Uh, and I think we did those in short, iterative segments. I mean, we're an agile program, so we did one course at a time, get the first group through, start tuning the content and the exercises, uh, and, and, it, and it worked. Uh, for those courses, we, we sort of invented on our own based on existing demand within the bank. Um, so I don't know if that sharing that experience is valuable. I am always curious to know how people start from scratch and create a new course. It's, it's not easy. Yes, exactly. Yeah, thank you for saying this. It's, it's really not easy, especially if you want to make it successful and uh, not a failure. So what we do, um, well, first, you know, always we look at the business objectives and the goals. So if we see in our strategy, for example, now we have identified, uh, defined our IT strategy for 2022. And one of the core, uh, core skills there or the directions we want to go is automation so we want to do more test automation so this is clearly for us immediately a sign fine this means we need to prepare the people to deal with the test with the with the automation uh, demand and um, all the tasks that are relating there so first thing this is the alarm where we say we need to get ready the second thing is we have quite a lot of um, we call them community of practice but it's really about um, I hope I don't know if this is a common term or it's just within our organization, but it's really where the people are meeting, are gathering and discussing strategic initiatives and, and stuff um, on a group level. And usually in those meetings, we also gather the insights. How does it look on local level? So we get also inputs from them like, I do not have enough uh, people with test automation skills, or I do have just, I don't know, five, but in beginner beginning level. So we are really... Uh, trying to to gather as much information as possible from the units from such platforms, and this is basically how we we come up with um, we we assess the need, the gap that the the skills that are missing to achieve the strategic goals, and we start from there. And this is where I said that it's very important to have internal experts. So I'm really relying on on my colleagues from the organization who are in constant touch with their peers in other units so that they can tell me this unit is struggling with this skill on this level and this i have to tell you that works quite fine i mean for if i if i talk now about the agile programs in the beginning it was quite easy because people didn't have basically they didn't have any 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 knowledge yet they were just a few people so what do you offer you start with the basic that's clear but then with the time, as people acquire more skills and experience, this got tricky. And this is where we identified, find this, this lead and coach program is now kind of more or less done or it served its purpose. So um, yeah, I, I, I got carried away, but I hope that I still tackled the, <laughs> the, the, the main concerns that you were having. Thank you. Uh, maybe there, uh, I can uh, do some uh, additional. So. I'm uh, working yeah. together with uh, Vaska and I'm, uh, I'm, 
I'm uh, leading our test automate test and test automation guild. So that means we have this we have this uh, sort of uh, guilds, yeah. And uh, in this uh, guild, so uh, for me, this is the test and test automation. Then we have a Scrum Master Guild, we have uh, a Cloud Guild, and a CI, CD, DevOps, uh, and so on. And in this uh, guild, uh, then you have uh, again a, um, a community of uh, practice, yeah, which is then in more detail. So this could be uh, test management stuff and so on. And uh, when we uh, had this meeting with the strategy for the next two years, and there was the, out the outcome, we have to invest in test automation, in, in upskilling. Yeah? Then uh, this was brought back to the, to the test and test automation guild. And uh, the guild uh, did a lot of research, which skills do we need? Then they defined uh, a, a syllabus, a, 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 a skill education road map yeah and then we did step by step and uh, uh, some of these uh, 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 of these parts of the road map is that we provide uh, internal trainings that we provide uh, external trainings that we that we license some material from um, from uh, from trainings providers that we can offer this for uh, for self learning and so on we have there the mix between self learning and uh, community learning and so on and uh, all the all the need uh, yeah so uh, comes from this uh, this uh, groups uh, of people what is uh, for us the guilds yeah but, and then yes the, from the experts yeah and then uh, we have uh, another construct. This is our uh, 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 um, uh, the HR learning coaches. Oh no, sorry, sorry. HR learning guides. Yeah, and the HR learning guides help helps a person who want to who, uh, who want to start in education. Yeah, to support them as a um, sort of a mentor. So uh, I would say you should do this. And uh, I know the expert, this is this guy, and I bring you together, yeah? And there we have uh, also this, uh, if you're not so a, a self-driven person, yeah, that there is another person who takes uh, care that uh, if you're a shy guy, that you uh, also uh, get uh, uh, this uh, training. Yes, those are all initiatives that we have also on, like in addition to the Talent Development Academy that I was presenting you. Yeah, so thanks really for, for joining in. Hi guys from Prague. Hi Anna. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I would like to add maybe one point to this. I am officially from Raiffeisen Czech, so one of the unit in Raiffeisen Group. And what I really like on those programs is that the, that the level of knowledge is actually based on the knowledge of the group that is starting the program. So when the program is created, there is just the high level curriculum, but the deep of the knowledge or deep of the information or level of the information, however you want to call it, is actually based on first experience that Academy has with, uh, with the participants in the first day or first module. So then all other modules are actually adapted to be really tailor-made for them with all of the trainings as per my experience the academy is doing like pre-agreement what kind of the topics should be mentioned there but then the level of the information is actually agreed and aligned with them just before the the training before the model based on the actually the feedback from the participants and that what makes actually these programs really exclusive because it's like really tailor-made for the group. Thank you. So. I, I have a question, a written question, someone with a poor audio. So let me, let me try to read the question. Okay. Um, okay. It says with, with, um, with explosion in information capture uh, requirements, how do you provide tools, training and hand holding with different skill sets, um, especially capture business process experience and things like that. So the focus here, if I understand correctly, is how do we deal with this too much information? How do we sort out and make sure that we focus on the on the right 
skills and the right. Okay. Well, again, I'm gonna I have think, to. Int I'm gonna have to interpret it. I, I think probably yes. <laughs> I, I think I think it, it, so. If if I got it right, um, again, this is the part where we are really using and um, we are using the learning guides. The, we are doing the research. Uh, we are using the communities. We are using the guilds. So we have to. I mean. Um, we are, diff we are offering different formats. So this, what I presented to you today, is, is really focused on the group. So this is just one way to develop skills. And this is highly focused and centered around the talent that we are having on the group level. But this is not the only way we develop skills. So we do have additional initiatives, the learning groups, the learning guides. We have some self-service uh, materials as well from like... Uh, coming directly for, for, from our HR colleagues. So I think that working closely with, uh, with our experts is one way to make sure that we are addressing the most important skills in this on-site format and this guided learning. And then additional information needed people can, can get um, out of other initiatives. There's somebody raising hand there, I think. Christoph? Or... Uh, hey there. Christopher, yeah. please. Hi. Yeah, it's, it's, it's me again, yeah. So, the um, question I had was, um, where did you see the biggest demand for training and development? Because uh, I guess from my experience in our, in our bank, the you know, technology teams, they, they've generally got the joke of Agile much faster, and a lot of the training development was really focused more on the kind of product ownership side, on, on, on the business side. Is that the same experience from you or is it, was it more evenly spread? Well, we focused, I mean, we are primarily focused on IT in our, in this talent development initiative. So I have not heard this complaint for, for our initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we actually, we did it the other way around. We started really with focus on IT and we heard this from business, but also from IT people telling us we need to address the business people. So we need to do it the other way around, educate business. In, in, in IT. So mm -hmm. I, I guess we have the, the, we've made also the opposite, opposite problem. <laughs> yes, as well. And this is, for example, we have a program for product owners, the, the, what you were mentioning. We started this last year in September and there we included really as well IT knowledge. So some, I mean, they were not coding or programming, but it's really about understanding basic concepts. And this was highly appreciated. So the people from there coming from business, and when I say business, I'm talking about the retail, so it's really, you know, the customer facing uh, part. And then they highly appreciated this approach, you know, having something for business, but with IT elements. Okay. Nice. Interesting idea, though, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad you like it. It's yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, maybe one, uh, again, one addition from my side, these, uh, these things with uh, uh, education for business people, uh, Vasca, uh, we have our Charlie platform, yeah. So uh, we have our um, learning platform. It's called Charlie, yeah. And there we are offering uh, uh, different different types of um, uh, of of a training of a training courses, yeah. And this is not only IT related, yeah. And it is not only for IT people, but the uh, the difference between the Go, the Go IT Academy and and this Charlie thing is yeah the Go IT Academy is planned one year before. Correct me if I'm wrong, Vaska. Yeah, so no, you know you know uh, you know all the courses. You you know that uh, the course in desk automation uh, for serverless is on 25th in. Uh, October 2021 and so on and this is more this is in a controlled way yeah so on the other hand the business if they want to have a excel excel for, for superstars yeah then you can go to the Charlie platform you can search for a course yeah and then you can book it yeah and this is the difference between the IT related stuff, the business stuff, and uh, how you can uh, book this. Yes, there are the normal trainings which are offered in the learning management system for sure. But you know, the topic that I was focusing today is rather the academy and the focus on the talent. So yeah, this, these are two things that uh, mm -hmm. 
that are worth mentioning here. Uh, so that means there is no one yeah, who says, okay, so, and you are at this level in test automation, we want to, we want to see you at this uh, level in one year. So this is your plan. Yeah? For the business stuff, yeah, they say, so, okay, so I want to learn some Excel stuff. Yeah? I go to the platform and then I'm selecting one. And if there is no, uh, uh, no Excel training for this, yeah, it's like it is, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions, guys? So, let's do one, one more question. I think, uh, Julian, were you trying to ask a question? I saw your video popping up in a minute. Yeah, I was going to, but to be honest, it, it was just answered because I was just wanting clarification about um, certain examples, but uh, um, Rudolf uh, gave me some. It's clarified. Okay, <laughs> good. Job done then. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> okay. Is there... Um, Thank you, Julian. Is there any other, other one final question um, from anyone or for comment or experience or something to share? So, yes, of course, if you have something to share, I'm very curious to hear. Well, if not, I can ask a question. Come on, I'll do one. I'll, I'll be the last one. The last one. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're, you're having, um, and this is more speculative. This is just me thinking mm -hmm. about. You mm -hmm. have all this cohort of, um, of a number of cohorts of waves of people that have been doing all these different trainings. Um, so, and you're talking about scaling as well. But in terms of developing your internal coaching, training, support, the training on its own is sometimes it's insufficient. You, you need to help it yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. How are you at the moment facing the challenge of like coaching the coaching and training the training? So developing either your internal training capability, coaching capability, either with a specialist like that or, or, or with the people that have gone, gone through these cohorts to, to keep expanding the knowledge. So that is, it's almost like an ever growing thing. How, how are yeah. you thinking about those? I'm curious. So it's a very good question, Jose. Um, we are having a lot of internal experts who are part of our trainings. And I, I stress out experts because being an expert in one area does not make you a trainer officially in this area. So it makes you an expert being able to share experience. But you know also from you know being an experienced trainer that you need other capabilities in order to transfer the knowledge in the most effective way. So what we, we are thinking, and um, uh, this is, um, I'm very happy to, you know, to, to think it now to, to say it out loud. We have to invest in, in, in uh, developing our internal experts into trainers, because this will really enable the people, but not only because of, you know, for purpose of delivering with you within the academy, but really for this coaching experience for this mentoring experience that people need and as, as um, Rudolf was mentioned my colleague about the learning guide so this is something where we also need good people we need to invest in those people so that they're able to support the others on their learning journey yes we are thinking of it just uh, I, I guess it will take some time to 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 address this I I'm thinking I think it was um, last year sometime uh, this popped up in, in discussion with, with one of my colleagues and uh, she said, we need this, we definitely need this. We have to develop internal, internal experts and trainers. So yes, it's part of the scaling, I guess. So uh, maybe uh, I can provide an uh, example. So uh, in, my, in my department, which is the agile engineering support, yeah? so we are the coaches for the developer yeah? to, to tell them uh, how they do the right test automation and so on, yeah. And uh, of course, we have to we have to expand uh, our um, uh, our department. And uh, currently, we have uh, one uh, one uh, angel engineering coach, yeah, which is uh, developed in test automation. Yeah. So this is for the next six months. Yeah. But in addition to that, yeah, he he uh, he get uh, also an education in this in 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 this how how uh, what do I need to explain all these things to the uh, 
to the audience. That means he need presentation skills, he needs communication uh, skills, uh, and so on. Yeah, and this is again, yeah, this is then the uh, the part or the job of this angel learning guide. Yeah, who helps this person? Yeah, that he goes into the right direction and that he get the help most of the time yeah he don't know so uh, okay so and where i should start with presentation skills yeah so uh where i should start where i should uh, end yeah and there you you need this uh, uh hr learning uh guides yeah uh, who uh, who are helping there yeah? mm -hmm. thanks Rudy. Thank you very much, Rudolf. Uh, I, we also have uh, some, some comments from um, uh, Jason as well, key online learning lessons learned for yes. self paced courses. Feedback. I mean, it's on the chat. I'm just reading on the chat. So mm -hmm. kind of, um, I want to say um, I want to say thank you very much, uh, Vasca um, and Rudolf as well, for, for all your contributions. I thank you for RBI for doing this. Um, I just put the final, uh, going back to your your final is saying thank you and if you want to be in touch with Vasca that's where you can find her yes. LinkedIn um, we we've recorded the sessions we the session we will try to pre uh, upload it into our YouTube channel as soon as possible we'll put the links on the um, Lineage London Lineage Global uh, Meetup group um, Vasca any any final words uh, other than for us is thank you very much for being there for doing this I mean thank you again and thanks to everybody who joined and also thank you for the questions and and sharing the experience it's very valuable for me I'm always happy to exchange so not only talking myself but really listening also to to your concern and experience so thank you once again for having me today thanks thank thanks Vasca that was awesome